Hi, my name is Jorge Coca and I'm the head of engineering at Very Good Ventures, where we specialize in flurry development. We work with some of the biggest companies that are using Flutter these days, and testing is one of those tools that is incredibly important for the success not only of your product, but of your development practice. During this video, we're going to see how we can actually use widget testing, one of the most incredible tools available in the Flutter SDK, to make our development more robust, fun, and scalable. Tests are like a math function. For a given input, you should always receive the same output or the same result. If for the same input you receive different results, that cannot consider a valid test. That's what makes tests like a function. And after all, how many times, especially when working with Flutter, you've heard that your user interface, your UI, is actually a function of the state. That's great because that means that we can determine what's going to be your UI results at any point on time based on our state results. Let's get started with a simple case, unit test. And let's just focus on a very small piece of code, a simple function that gets two numbers and produces the sum of those numbers. It is very easy to identify what's going to be your input in this case, right? It's going to be your two numbers, your two arguments. And it's going to be very easy to identify what's going to be the output, the result. That's going to be the value that we return from that function. Even better, Dart gives us the type of that result. So we can write a very simple test case using the test function from the test framework in Dart to assert that, hey, whenever we pass two and two, we receive the value four. But is it always that easy? Yes, you guessed it right. It's not always that easy. Let's look at an example of a more complex class that actually fetches a list of restaurants. We're going to make the assumption that this class is going to take two other dependencies in its constructor. The first one, an API client that allows us to make network calls. The second one, a GPS client that might give us the current coordinates for a given user. So the business case is that we want to fetch restaurants nearby us. Therefore, we're going to need the GPS client to get the coordinates and the API client to fetch those restaurants nearby us. Testing this class is going to be a little bit more complex because our inputs are different. We have two other dependencies that are going to affect the behavior and actually the output, the result of our method. On the other hand, even our output is a little bit more complex as well. Because yes, we can return a list of restaurants, but also we could be throwing an exception if our GPS client or if our API client throws an error. This is not a problem at all, but we're going to have to learn one more tool. We're going to have to use a library that is going to allow us to control the behavior of those dependencies. Two popular ones in the community are Mokido and Mocktail. Their usage is very similar, and they're going to let us use a syntax of the style when something happens, then I'm going to send this reaction in our test. Let's write a test case to validate that when the GPS client throws an exception, we actually throw an exception also in the restaurant repository method that we're testing. What we can do in this case is to use one of these mock libraries with the when then throw syntax. We're going to control the behavior of our GPS client and say that when we're trying to retrieve the current coordinates from the GPS client, then we're going to throw an exception. Therefore, when we run our expectation against the restaurant repository, we can check that a restaurant repository also throws an exception. Hey, congrats. This is a huge milestone. With this technique, you're actually capable of writing unit tests for pretty much every single class is going to fall in your code editor. However, testing widgets in Flutter, it's a little bit more complicated because after all, what's the input in a widget tree? What's the output in the widget tree? What can we do 
to solve this problem? Well, first of all, don't panic. Let's go back to the things that we already know that we can apply. So then we can start identifying what are the things that we don't know, so we can go learn them, start using it for our widget tests. So, what do we know so far? We know that tests are like a math function and they must be deterministic. Remember, for a given input, there should be only a single output. We also know that our user interface, our UI, it's a function of our state, meaning that the test that we're going to execute against the widget tree, against our user interface, they're going to be somehow variable based on the state that we have. Keep that in mind because that's going to be very important. We also know that the inputs are going to be very, very important as well. And we've seen how to use method argument to control those inputs. We've also seen how we've used class dependencies to control those inputs as well. And finally, when we talk about outputs, when we talk about results, that is nothing different than just our expectation. So we're going to be still using an expectation to make sure that our tests are correct. Let's start using the widget tree that we have in this example. This widget tree starts at the top with our application widget. And we're going to assume that there's a path to go through an authenticated route and through a non-authenticated route. And through this authenticated route, we're going to be using block to manage the state to load restaurants on a screen. We're going to be using two different widgets, block provider to inject the restaurant's block on our widget tree. And then we're going to be using block builder to build the different states associated with this restaurant's block. Our restaurant's block can produce three different states. One for loading because, hey, sometimes fetching this information takes a little bit of time. It could be also to show an error state because sometimes mistakes happen. We might run out of connection. We might be under a tunnel. Who knows? But we need to alert the user that something went wrong. And finally, what we all want to see, the happy case, that is that we can actually load the list of restaurants. How do we test this? Well, I don't know if you noticed this when we were writing unit tests, but every test has three differentiated parts. The first one, setting up the objects that we're going to test and its dependencies so we can control its behavior through mocking. The second part is going to be applying side effects, meaning that we can interact with our object, call different methods, whatever that is, but we can use those side effects to produce the result. Therefore, the third and last part, it's going to be running our expectations. Once we apply our side effects and we receive the result, we got to make sure that we match that given result against our expectation. If those two are the same, we can consider this test successful. So let's get started. With unit tests, we were using the test framework that was pure Dart. But in this case, to test Flutter widgets, we need to use the Flutter test framework that it's going to give us access to the test widgets method. Think about it as the unit test test method that we use, but with a little bit of superpowers. Those superpowers are going to be provided by the widget tester object that we're going to receive in the body of the callback of the widget test. Sounds confusing, but if you see the code, it's much easier to understand. As we said, the first step is to build and set up the object under test. In this case, it's going to be the widget restaurants that we saw before in the widget tree. Because based on the state of a restaurant's block, it's going to be producing different results. However, setting up this object for testing is going to be a little bit different. For unit tests, it was enough to build the object and mock its dependencies. However, when we're talking about the widget tree, a pattern node in the widget tree could be also a dependency. That's precisely the case of a restaurant's block. That's why the block provider is above a restaurant's widget. Therefore, we got to do the same thing on testing. So inside the pump widget method, we're going to use block provider that value 
to provide a mock instance of a restaurant's blog. Now that we're providing the restaurant's blog using blog provider that value in the widget tree, we can control its behavior. In this case, we want to say that the state is loading because the block is saying that the state is loading and it's already in the widget tree. By the time we pump it, it's gonna execute that branch of the widget tree and it's gonna put the UI already in the loading progress. Therefore, now I can run my expectation and validate that I can find a widget of type restaurants loading in the widget tree in just one widget. That's success. However, Many times, you don't have to test a full widget tree or even just a big branch. It could be just one widget in isolation that might contain internally inside its build method some side effects that you still want to test. For example, in our case, our widget restaurant success is at the end of the node. This widget is responsible for rendering the list of restaurants once they're loaded. And one of the features is that when you tap on one of those list tiles, it will navigate to the restaurant's details page. How can we do that? Well, we already know the steps. The first step, we're gonna set up our objects. In this case, it's dependency. It's just gonna be a list of restaurants. We can just create a fake one. The second step is going to apply your side effect. In this case, that side effect is not coming from our state management. It's coming from the interaction with that widget. So we're going to use the widget tester object to tap on a particular item. And we're going to use a finder to find the item that we want to tap in. In this case, we want to use find that text to find the list style that it's going to have the name of the restaurant that we want. When we tap on an item, we're expecting Flutter to navigate from one place, from one page, to a completely different one. Therefore, our widget tree is changing. And we're gonna tell our widget tester, hey, there were some changes in our user interface, refresh. We're gonna do that with the pump and settle method. That's how we're gonna be completing our side effects. Now, we are ready to run our expectations. And as you can see, it doesn't change that much. Congratulations, this is a huge milestone. You know now how to use the widget tester object to interact with different pieces of your user interface. There are so many things that you can learn after you finish watching this video. As you can imagine, there are many more APIs in the widget tester class that are going to allow you to do more complex interactions with your user interface. There's also much more complex finders and matchers that are gonna allow you to run much more complex and rich expectations. However, the basics won't change. Remember, when writing a widget test or any type of test, there's three steps. Set up your objects, run the side effects, and run your expectations. It's been a pleasure to chat with you about widget testing in Flutter. It's a topic that I love, and I hope that you like it as well. See you in the next video.